Is it harmful to take antacids every day? My name is Dr. Taranel, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the risks and benefits of taking antacids every day, and more so going to look at what the potential downsides are to taking these from nutrient deficiencies and other problems lower down in the digestive tract that can come from taking antacids every day. Also, if you like the type of information that I'm providing and want to provide a financial support to the channel, then click on the Southwest Integrative Medicine icon. That will take you to the main YouTube page for Southwest Integrative Medicine. And you'll see in the upper right hand side, there's a PayPal link, which you can use to make a donation. If you do choose to do that, I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Let's dig into it. So is it harmful to take antacids every day? Let's look at what antacids are and how they can be helpful. So antacids are very important in preventing serious damage to the mucosal or cell lining inside the esophagus and inside the stomach. They do come at a cost. So let's first look at what we mean by antacid because there are several different types and mechanisms of reducing the acid production. So the simplest versions are things like Tums, which contain bicarbonate. And these ba basically neutralize the acid that's coming out of the cells of the stomach. There are also things like histamine type 2 blockers. So these are things like granitidine and famotidine. All of the things that end in D-I-N-E are similar types of histamine 2 blockers. And the histamine uh, binds to the parietal cells, and parietal cells are cells in the digestive tract. When the histamine binds to the parietal cells, it causes acid to be released from these cells. So the histamine type 2 blockers block the production of acid through binding to that receptor and inhibiting the histamine from binding, and it can reduce the production of acid by as much as 50 to 70 percent. There are also uh, antacids uh, that are called proton pump inhibitors. These include things like Prilosec and Pantoprazole, and these directly inhibit the pump that creates the acid, and that can inhibit it by as much as 90 percent. So there are three main types of antacids. There's the neutralization of the acid, there's the inhibiting of the histamine from binding, which then reduces the acid, and then there's directly binding and inhibiting the pump that makes the acid. So the idea with taking antacids is that you're going to reduce the acid and thereby allow the mucous membranes or the cells uh, in the digestive tract, in the esophagus, in the stomach to take a break from all the acid production. And this can be helpful for short periods of time. But in looking at what the potential harm is or the cost of this, we also have to, have to ask, what is the purpose of the acid uh, to begin with? Why is the body producing the acid? Mainly, the first thing that the, uh, the acid does is it activates enzymes in the stomach, which then go on to do the bulk of the digestion and breakdown of the uh, protein bonds in the stomach. So this is the first problem with taking antacids every day. There's less food breakdown in the stomach, leading to decreased absorption of nutrients, both in the stomach and further down. Most of the absorption occurs lower down, but some does occur in the stomach as well. But there's actually a lot more to the story. So the same cells that are being inhibited by the proton pump inhibitors and the histamine blockers also produce something called intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor is needed to absorb B12 lower down in the body. So what happens with B12 is it's tangled in with the proteins that we eat, like animal proteins. When we consume the protein, the acids and enzymes start to break apart those protein bonds, and the intrinsic factor can bind to the B12. Further down in the small intestine is where it's actually taken up by the body. But when you are inhibiting the parietal cells from producing acid, you're also inhibiting the production of intrinsic factor. In addition, when there is decreased acid in the stomach, it changes what happens uh, further down in the small intestine. There's not enough acid secreted in the stomach, then it doesn't trigger the secretin, which is a hormone that's produced in the small intestine in response to the acidic environment. And what secretin does is it causes the pancreas to produce bicarbonate and other pancreatic enzymes. The bicarbonate neutralizes the stomach acid so that the enzymes that are then produced uh, also by the pancreas can act in that environment because it's a different pH than what's higher up in the stomach. So when the, when the secretin isn't produced, uh, that can change how the enzymes work. Also, when there's not enough breakdown of the proteins, there may not be a strong enough activity to 
produce uh, the CCK. And CCK is another hormone that stimulates the pancreas to produce lipases and proteases. And the idea here is that the fat content of the stomach that's emptying into the small intestine triggers the CCK to be produced. But if there's not enough breakdown, you're just getting like a, a dumping of the uh, stomach contents, there may not be enough surface area to trigger this CCK and then trigger uh, the lipase in and uh, proteases to be produced. So then you have further lack of breakdown of your food. The other thing is CCK also causes the gallbladder to contract and, and trigger that, which is needed for emulsification of the fats that are in the small intestine. And then the lipase can work on the fats. So is it harmful to take antacids every day? Yes, it can be, but the dose and duration of taking them does matter. Short-term uh, uses like days to weeks, your body can recover from this just fine and it may be needed to get your problem under control. If there's severe erosion and other problems going on, you may need to even take it for longer. Long-term chronic use definitely will lead to B12 deficiency, iron deficiency, magnesium. Uh, and it can also increase your risk for bacterial overgrowth and other microbial imbalances lower down in the small intestine and potentially even in the colon. So keep this in mind if you're taking antacids or considering taking them, or if you're already on them, you know, you may want to look at what are my options for getting off them so that you can prevent these. And if you are taking them and need to take them, make sure you're checking to see if you have deficiencies of B12, iron, and magnesium. There may be other def vitamin deficiencies too that can occur from taking these antacids. So hopefully you know now what the risks and benefits are of taking antacids every day. It can be harmful and can cause some nutrient deficiencies and other problems, so keep that in mind. If you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions or comments about any of the contents of this, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that if I think there's enough interest. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.